In this video, we're going to help you debug programs by examining memory and looking a little bit at the stack structure of a function that's being used. We're going to be using the Fibonacci program. We're going to stop at two different points in the code to be able to look at things. In the first one, we're going to look at the putS function, just as we're about to call it, to be able to look at how arguments are pushed on the stack. We'll take a look at the arguments and the things that are on the stack as we just immediately call the putS function. And we're going to use that to learn how to use the examine command and how to find the information about registers. Then we're going to stop inside the Fibonacci routine. The Fibonacci routine is obviously recursive, so we're going to see that the Fibonacci routine calls itself. We're going to look at the entry code to the Fibonacci routine and see how the arguments are actually parsed and then use the examine command to be able to look at the activation record for Fibonacci for procedure calls and returns. To do this, we're going to start up GDB in our um, program. We're going to set a breakpoint for main, and we're going to always display what the current program counter is as an instruction. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and run. And what we're seeing now is some of the preamble code for procedure main. We're just going to step until we get to the call to the put s routine. The call to the put s routine has one argument, which is this value above. This argument here is we have um, moved a constant, which is just a number, hexadecimal 8048.5b0, to whatever the stack pointer is currently pointing at. Let's actually take a look at the stack pointer. That's the current value of the stack pointer. Note that the type of this value is that it's a void star, in other words, a pointer to something, but it doesn't really know what it's a pointer to. We can use the examine command to be able to look at what the stack pointer is pointing at. So print just prints the value of the register. Examine uses it as an address to look into memory. The thing that's at that address, at the stack pointer's address, is exactly the constant that was moved into that location, which is about what we would expect. The next thing that's going to happen here is that there's going to be a call instruction that's executed we're going to just follow this down one step and what we want to do is go through the call and we're at some code at that point. The only thing I want to really look at right now is what's at the stack pointer. So the stack pointer has been decremented. It has gone from being hexadecimal blah 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 550 to 54 C. So it has been decremented by 4. C plus 4 would be 0. Or sorry, it's C minus 4 would be 0. Actually, let's just do the math. We'll take the larger of the two numbers. Copy. Paste. And subtract the smaller. I'm going to use the accelerators. Or not. Copy, paste. That's a difference of four. So we pushed one item on top of the stack. If we now take a look at where the stack pointer is um, and look at it as a hexadecimal number, what we'll see here is that this was the address near where the call instruction was. We'll see that this is actually the instruction immediately following where the call instruction is. So, for example, if we actually take a look at um, the region of memory where the, we originally were. So if we copy this and then paste it and say examine look for two instructions at that address we see here is our, our instruction to call and at the next instruction that's where we would be returning to. So the return address is the instruction immediately following that gets pushed onto the stack is the instruction immediately following the call. The X command lets you examine things, obviously, in a lot of different ways. We can look at things as hexadecimal numbers and as instructions. We can also explore uh, data that's been being manipulated by the program. So let's take this address up here. I'm going to copy that and then paste it. And um, I'm using the read line mechanism, so Control a goes to the beginning of the line um, to be able to print things out. If I look at this memory address, 
I'm going to always be using the last modifier or way of looking at it that I had used before. So in this particular case, I'm looking at this memory address, which actually should be a string, and it's being decoded as instructions. I'm going to decode this now as a string, and we see it's this string, enter a positive number. The x slash s means string, x slash i means uh, instruction. You can prefix this with a number like 2 to say decode two instructions. We can also look at it as a decimal number, or as a hexadecimal number, or as an octal number. Um, and there's probably other mechanisms, but that's about all you'll ever use. You can also look at it as a byte hexadecimal, or for example, 10 hexadecimal bytes. You could look at it as 10 characters, and here we then see the um, actual expansion of the, the, the characters. So actually, let me go back to the beginning of our string. I kept forgetting to use the address. So here, 10 characters, E-N-T-E-R. Enter. We can look at this as um, half hexadecimal, so 16 bit quantities, and as word hexadecimals, and as what are called the gigantic hexadecimal numbers, or 16, 64 bit numbers. It'll continue to use, if you don't put in a prefix, it'll continue to use the format that you used before. So if you've looked in one mechanism or the other, you need to typically go back to looking at things as words. Um, for that. So the examine command is used to be able to look at strings. We can also examine things, for example, uh, respect to the stack pointer or to other registers um, or expressions involving registers. The expression itself will be evaluated and then that's used as an address that's used to the examine command.